Okay, this eight footer I want to cut short uh, so it fits right on the stud, and I want to come just short of uh, 93 inches because I've already marked it. And how you do that is you got the mark there. I've got my four inch square here. I just put it on there. Be careful you don't cut your uh, hand off. I've got my foot on the bottom so it doesn't go anywhere. And you want to use. Make sure your blades are nice and sharp. So when, when they get uh, dull, uh, flip it around and replace it. And uh, you just bend it like that. With short pieces like this, you want to score the backside all the way from the bottom to the top before you snap it, otherwise you break it off. But if it's a big piece, you can score just part of it and snap okay, it Okay, now I've got this eight foot sheet leaning exactly where I want it, only it's going to be up high. Um, you know, it's already marked where the uh, wall studs are, but I'm going to go through and put a nail where every stud is and the proper way of doing it. And then if you got a presto change on now, all you got to do is go through and uh, mark it, nail it off, screw it off, and the whole uh, whole nine yards, no problem. Okay, this is how you put the bottom sheet on. I've got this kicker down here that uh, I've already thrown in there, and that lifts it up for you while you uh, get the board started. Now, the whole board up is one fell swoop, but on this particular one, I decided to do one side at a time instead of the whole thing because it just didn't want to go. And they're pretty uh, dark and tight. Now, you'll notice on this uh, wall, there were some electrical boxes, which I haven't even uh, cut out yet. But I did note it, but I did mark it down here. You got an arrow, four and a quarter inches, 33 inches for another box. Here's one at 33 inches. Okay, now I've got these electrical boxes. I've already marked it down here. And, and, and those are the tops of the boxes. This is the way the professionals do it a lot of times. Um, it's the way I do it too, because you actually cut out a box a lot cleaner than you would if you had tried to measure it. But you can only do that if you got something like a rotor zip or whatever. I just broke the tip on that, but you know, you, you can normally do a lot better job than this. That's kind of sloppy actually, but during the taping process, you'll be able to clean that up and uh, it'll look just fine. And I'll cover that when we start doing taping. But like I say, I just uh, broke the tip and I've got hundreds of tips and I'll replace that in a second. But for this little thing, I'm not even going to bother replacing it. I'll just jam a knife in there and cut it out. And now you're good to go. You're good to nail this whole thing up, and, and there you have it. Uh, should work just fine. Okay, I'm uh, nailing this piece of sheet box on, which is pretty much different than what I was just telling you before, where we start on the top, whereas this one is a vaulted uh, ceiling. I'm starting on the bottom instead of on the top. Bottom in before I start nailing the top and everything. Otherwise, you get a warp in the sheetrock. It's bound tight here, and then you can't shove it tight against the bottom because it's too long. So tack it, nail it. Now sometimes the stud is not right exactly in the center of the joint, which means if I put a nail or a screw right here, I'm going to miss the uh, stud. But there is one there, but it might be off it a little bit. So I'm just, uh, screws work better for this, but uh, you can use nails too. But you have to toenail sometimes to get it to work right. And how you toenail is you go in at an angle. And then when it hits the stud, you just kind of run it in there tight. 
And you have to sometimes put the, the screws really tight to each other so that it uh, sucks the cheap If you're doing uh, hand nailing, sometimes you come in here and uh, you put that nail in there. And then if you come about two inches from that nail, this first nail kind of sucks it up tight, the second nail sucks it up even tighter, and you have a nice tight joint there when you get two of them right next to each other. But when you're using screws and you're using that screw gun, the, the, the tip of the screw gun uh, forces the sheetrock against there. So when I'm driving this screw with this screw gun, into the wall. It isn't just the head of the screw here that's sucking the sheetrock up tight to the wall. It's actually the surface of this thing, uh, screw gun, because if I push this down with my finger, you'll see that the head of the screw driver goes down. So when I put that in there and I drive this in there, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure there. And this surface here is forcing the sheetrock tight against the wall. So, I mean, you really, you cannot hand nail and do a better job than you would with a screw gun like this. It, this is going to be superior at all times. Another thing that, just to watch out for, um, a lot of times you, uh, you, you get people complaining about uh, drywall nail pops, they call them. And, this is after the house has been lived in for several months and stuff. Almost always, the reason for drywall pops is not because the screws were not in tight enough or the nails were not in tight enough. Almost always, it's because the lumber that was used is green or wet and it hasn't thoroughly dried. It's not, uh, and so when the lumber behind there dries and starts to shrink, then what happens is there's a gap between the sheetrock and the stud, and then when you push against it, you get a pop nail. Okay, we're going to cut the sheetrock for the vaulted part, and I've measured it to 95 and a quarter, which is the center of this stud. I measure up here, and I come up with about 19, uh, 19 and a half inches, and it starts at about zero. So. That's what I'm going to cut. My piece just come across here. This is the length. I'll cut that in a second. And you just come back here. I use two hands to guide myself when I'm freehanding like that. Um, it makes for a lot more steady of a cut. There again, it's never going to be perfect, but you just do the best you can. And uh, take that, snap it, and then come across here. And score the back side. The blade just kind of follows the crease if you allow it to. And there you have it. That thing is ready to nail up. Okay, we've got uh, the last piece up here to cut out, which is an oddball shape. It, it, I've decided to terminate it here. Again, I wrote all the measurements over here. And then I'm over here cutting the piece of rock out of the scrap that was left over the, the, the last one. What I haven't shown you yet is uh, what this thing is for. I've been using that roto zip on most everything, but i got to cut out above that window. And so this thing comes in handy. I've already scored this with my knife, but this here, you've got to somehow get this cut off. So, pretty simple, just like that. And then you come over here, and like I said, I've already scored this, and uh, you pop it, and theoretically, this thing should fit uh, 